That's... I'm not even that mad. That's pretty difficult to do. Cringe strike. I like uh, Anya. Anya's... I, I, I just love the notion of you heal by shooting, and one of your snipers is your healers. I, I think that was... Uh, interesting. Hitting you, I like that. Yeah. I don't doubt it. You know, what's really interesting is that there's such different games that uh, Team Fortress 1 and Team Fortress 2 actually went into development um, at different times. And um, Team Fortress 2 is actually um, conceived of before... Sorry, Team Fortress 2 is conceived of before Team Fortress 1 and came out 10 years afterwards. Say again? Uh huh. That's awesome. You are just AFK. But Anya was. Anya was not. Anya. Anya? Huh. You want a mic, Matt? Because you are a great banter uh, for me when I'm streaming. Gotcha. You know what? <laughs> what are you doing, Moira? And leave me alone. Oh. That's ours. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's in my face. Yeah, Torbjorn's scary. Torbjorn's... You, you don't... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We're playing terribly, but it is interesting. Cool. That was terrible. I had fun, though. Huh. Kind of like a vampire count. Wipe it again. Here he again. <laughs> Is it really? That's nuts. <laughs> yeah, I did. Loot box on someone else's account. Eckenfeld? Yeah, Prepare your defenses. Select your hero. That's dope. That sounds too good. Yeah. Whoa, hold on. No defense heroes when we're on defense. That's way more important. That does sound good, though. Very offensive defense player. Defensive hero. <laughs> it's a perfect day for some mayhem. I hate to break this to everyone, but if we're here to blow up the box, someone's beaten us to it. Huh. I like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty much, there's evidently a lot of lore and story 
in this game, and I wasn't aware of that. Um, were you into that at all, Matt? Bounced out the telephone pole. Oops. Yeah, I meant to do that. What are you talking about? I meant to fall off the ledge just at that moment. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm-hmm. Always. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Oh. <laughs> oh, I got him. <laughs> and I have my ult. swooping around the new character the new hero Moira I thought it was being sniped I do like Reinhardt. <laughs> well, that's a fine. How do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my favorite part of the Mad Max reference. There is just that he's Australian, where they filmed that movie, and that's where Mel Gibson's from. They did film it in Australia, didn't they? Everyone on the board. Oh, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I I realize there's Yeah. Oh, I was like I thought it would at least go off and do some damage, but not even. <gasps> Tracer. I love Tracer. Tracer is one of my favorite mechanics, so just go back in time three seconds. Activate the Omega 3. that better though. I'll play it back. Oh, the somber got me. Yeah. Alright, this match is going much better. Does every hero's ult go up over time, or...? Oh. 
Huh. We pinned each other. Oh, he took himself out. Okay. I'm happy about that. Oh. Bunch of little sentry turrets along the way. Good for him. And... Vic oh. Almost called it. Huh. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. Shoot. Someone get there. Come on, people on the internet who can't hear my voice. We're on my team. Someone get there. Okay. Uh, good. Man, I don't even remember being the last time I was inside the castle. You'd be like, Disneyland, you never make it inside the castle. It's just a weird thing you hear about. But no, they got the point. You get pushed back in the castle. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, my family never makes it there. I know. Very, very expensive hotel room. They give it out to free for free. Who? To? Who? Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And for those of you who are listening to our test stream, the voice that you're not hearing, that I'm talking to off-frame, is our uh, good friend, um, Matt Hall. One of my uh, co-hosts and co-producers here. Ready for transcendence. Well then, Zenyatta. You again. There we go. There we go. Oh, I got hacked. I was just like, um, where's my bomb? I love that. I love that about Sombra. Just like, and ult. What's happening? Where's my ult? So good. Was Sombra here at launch, or is she one of the updates? Cool. I can see that. Oh, she finished me off with a pistol. That's that's embarrassing. I'm happy with that. Yeah, I know we were doing so well in the beginning. Took me a while to figure out how to play some Metro, but I am a good fan of her. Yeah. Ten player kill streak. That's good. Traveling to Eichenwald. Eichenwald? Attack. Who do I want to attack with? Ooh, Tracer. So good. Tracer and Sombra are two of my favorite characters in this game and in, in most games. I love time travel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, yes. 
So satisfying to get good with a character like this. It's so difficult. What? What? Uh, that's what I say to that. Uh, and she's also a great character to see cosplay of, which is what most of these characters, most of these characters are great to see um, people cosplaying as. And I think they were definitely designed with that in mind. Not, you know, the best cosplays are Reinhardt cosplays. Reinhardt cosplays, um, Pyro from Team Fortress 2, and Brotherhood's Brothers of Steel are the best cosplays I've ever seen. Here we go. Alright, I've got two nerf guns and I know how to use them. Or what? Yep, now we play the waiting game. And there was Bastion. Yeah. In 30 seconds. Yeah. Beer me. Beer me. It is not my preference to see him out as a person, but I will see him done. Still can't believe Pikachu. What? Yeah? What? Oh. I didn't even know there was a new Pokemon movie. Huh. Yeah. Little sentry turrets. Symmetra, man. Ugh, oh, well played. My retire is charging. Is that the best you can do? Is that the best racist impression you could do? No, you could always go more racist. Can you or am I trapped? What's up? What what was holding me back? Was it Moira or Symmetra? What's up? Alright. I gotta that's the first thing I gotta do is just take out those little turrets. Little valve looking weapon things. <laughs> Oops, the this is. I know. I know. Thank you. I appreciate you, Matt. You're always so direct and straightforward. What the hell? What? I know. I just wasn't close enough. Is it? Does it stick? <sighs> yeah. I thought. I keep thinking the blast radius is bigger than it is. That's my big problem. It's sticky. They do nothing to teach you that.
Ugh. That's good to know. Thank you, Matt. I'm glad to have played video games with you. Oops. I don't need healing. What's up? Sticking with a sticky. God, I want to play Halo again. I'm sorry? Yeah, I know. I just realized I was at 50. <laughs> Zenyatta. Zenyatta. Huh. <laughs> and she's back in the game. You're playing my whole. I excited the enemy. Sixty seconds remaining. Oops, not where I wanted to be. I wanted to stand on top of those things. She's got, she put up two more. Oh, that's the blast radius I thought that Tracer's bomb had. Has. Back in the fight. I've got you in my sights. The teleporter is here. Enemy teleporter destroyed. I claim the objective. Yeah. Stuck him though. I never mind getting killed with D.Va on foot as opposed to in her mech, just because that's tough to do. <laughs> what do you mean? You're kidding. Oh, shot for shot, you mean. I was like, no. You're kidding. Man. Interesting. Because they are shotguns. Man. Ugh. Yeah, I'm gonna up a more check. That Symmetra play throughout the game. All those different things. 32 kills just with turrets. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Interesting. Well, well then. Yeah, let's see how you play, Healer Moira. What can I do? That's healing? Cool. When in doubt, check the manual. Fade. Not shoot, biotic orb. Cool. Oh, okay, cool. So, I'm either giving, I'm either sucking or blowing health. Interesting. Triforce. I've had a Triforce symbol on this game. What plays in the background? Cool. Glad I got my nails did for this battle. Uh, I hate that about the level design in this game. Every time you're at a surface, you're not meant to be. You just get pushed slightly off of it. It's better than the invisible wall, but yeah, that's not saying much. I'm not out there. Oh. My will made real. 
Oh, that's awesome. We got a straight up bouncy ball of death. And we're gonna have a straight up bouncy ball of life. Bouncy ball of life. Cool. Okay. I really like that. That's I like that Spider Man esque. Check. I'm gonna stick with Tracer. I wanna get better with Tracer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> absolutely nothing happened. That's what I'm laughing at. Is absolutely nothing. There we go. There he is. Channel three. Uh, Channel three. Uh, oh yeah, baby. Oh uh, yeah. That that voice that I that that can you person hear me? off frame. I can hear you. Oh, yeah. My God. You Absolutely. Can hear me. This yeah. Is great. I get to do commentary. Yeah, you do. Ooh, tracer on the table. I just yeah. wish your cute face can be on frame. I mean, dude. Nah, nah, nah. It's not even that. I love every character in this game. I I think they're all so good. And I when like Moira came game. out. I was baked, so I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, yo, for real? Like, like she's got like, the eyepiece and the, the veiny, like, biotic arms. She looks like, like a 90s X-Men. Uh, X-Men. Yeah, it's, it's not good. I don't like it. I'm sorry. It's simple. I, like every, I love every other character in this game, but when she came out, I was just like, what she the hell? She plays well. Like, the literal few minutes she that I had spent like with her, Sandra she looks like went on a four-month crack binge. Could the healer always run out front like that for everybody? That's dope. Moira, M O I R A. Oh, dude, don't do that. Oh, God. Right. Oh, my God, I hate this mouse. Plays great. I just don't like yeah, she totally. No, I, and I love that super, that super superhero y. I did not do that on purpose. Super, like, you know, Spider Man heal, kill, heal, kill. And I love the bouncy ball mechanic. Like, her. Yeah, no, it's a, it's great. She looks like poop. That's true. You leave my She's friend alone. When they gave Ragnaros legs. Yeah, I mean, come on, look at it, dude. Like, it looks, it cool. looks like a third grader drew it, dude. Yeah. That and I notice him her her um the bust that you see in the character select doesn't look that much like her uh, like character a, model in she game. Looks like a human Digimon. Describe <laughs> 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 it. Was not ready for that sequence of words. That was delightful. Is this a war pad I can use? I, I was thinking that as well, just like, um, and I appreciate that. Neutral. I really appreciate that. She's the gender neutral bathroom. I appreciate that. I appreciate yeah. that. No, I like they did that. No, I, that well, occurred to me. I was going to say, it was like, she looks like she could. Um... No, 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 no. She... And I appreciate it. I wonder, will, 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 um, Tracer's bomb stick to Reinhardt shield? I don't think so. I'm gonna test that out. Oh, I actually get sniped. Sniping is just not a part of this game. Say again? Stickiest bomb. No, I didn't realize you could stick it either. It was really cool. It's really cool. Yeah, it's her ult. That's her ult. It's a quick, quick fuse sticky bomb that sticks to surfaces and players. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with the rest of what she's got going on, but yeah. I was like, okay, fine. Genji went past me. Good Genji is the most irritating thing in the world. 
A good Genji. Like, like look oh, at that. God. I can't even keep up with that. Ooh, Tober. Ooh, he's candy. When in doubt, phase out. Language. Who are you and why are you standing? Hanzo's the guy who's about to kill me standing right in front of me. If you ever wanted to hear Ben Nix Bradley say thanks for playing as many times in an hour as possible, just wait for him to play Hanzo. Leave me alone, Doomfist. But Doomfist is not good. God, he fisted you in as, the mouth. <laughs> as he kills me. <laughs> See, like, there he misses. I'm like, I'm fine. I can whittle him down and then just punch to death. To death. Where'd that teleporter go? Gonzo's. It's Gonzo. You're on mint potion. You, I want to die. Wow, we don't have a tank. I was like, that's ridiculous. Someone, no. Hmm. Uh. Yeah, that's that's decent Reinhardt. Oh yeah, so just right there. Works for me. Took him out. And that's the coolest skin I've ever seen for Reinhardt. I just noticed that as he killed me. That's cool. Oh, for a second I thought I was about to get revived by a mercy. I was like, dope. Because his gun targets multiple people, so if you ever got him in a yeah. fatal funnel, like a hallway or That's a corridor, dope. Is that what Reinhardt's supposed there? to look like? Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Sorry, sorry. No, 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 sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no, um, Winston, yeah, there are a lot of, a lot of those short, you know, cone AoE characters, you know, like, there's the Pyro in, uh, Team Fortress 2, and then there's Mei, who's my favorite hero, there's Mei, or the hero I'm best at, I should say, but Mei, Winston, and, um, Sombra are, are all, all variants of, like, the Flamethrower class, and they're really cool, and they do feel different, oh, and, and Mercy, of course, um, as, uh, yeah, I love this guy, he did really well, um, uh, Mercy. Uh, well, you know that's that's a little different. Lots of lots of games have healers that are you know point the hose at them and that's how you heal them. Um, but this game actually has a bunch of characters, and I'm sure they're just going to keep adding more that have that flamethrower mechanic. Yeah, I'll stay team. Um, this is a good round. We did really poorly, but that was fun to play. I was determined to play a character I want to get better as. Defend. I don't want to defend with you. I want to defend with you. I'm gonna take off. Cool. Thank you, sir. Yep. Matt Hull signing off. Always a pleasure to have you. See you next time. <laughs> What's up? Uh. Uh. Moira can warp. I did not know that. Hello. The government here has such a medieval view towards armies. Mm -hmm.
Yes, he did. Guilty, who are you playing as? Moira? Hello, sorry. Moira it appears to be. Started me far back. They laugh at a while. Is that Sophie Mint Potion? Matt is a bit quiet. Ha ha ha. A bit too quiet. Before anyone else's, <laughs> you before anyone else's other significant other. I see how it is, Baze. <laughs> Whoa! Why did I hear that this far away? You can't be that close. I see. I see. Oh. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Oh, right behind the molding of the building. I see. Oh, I'll kill that guy. Oh, they ran up. Oh, but I'll kill that guy. It was me. Me and my steel trap. Me and my big steel trap. Oh, good. My ult's charging much slower than I remember. It's been a while since I played this game. Yeah, Junkrat's ult charges quite slowly. Huh. I guess I got a bunch of XP. That's cool. Oh, no. Well, then. I don't know why I lost my ult, but I did. I also want to stop the payload. That doesn't mean we're going to. No. Um. Did they already get that point? I oh, had yeah, to have. Well, then. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, we got it. Yeah, we did. Okay, I'm liking Moira more and more all the time. Yeah, no, that's that's not only really super cool. That effect that you can see, like that that player is playing it well. Like I had trouble moving because I had trouble seeing at that point. So that's really cool. Like it's it's doing the same thing. Um, uh, what you'd expect, you know, you have a healing beam, you have a, you have a damaging beam. Just one sucks health, one blows it, um, at your allies. But that was really cool. Like, not being, I think it did slow me down in-game, but it mostly it was just I was having trouble seeing. That's very good. Oh, bouncy ball! I love that too. That's friendly, okay. Okay, there's someone up here, and I'm not going to let that happen for very long. Hmm. 
Nice. Nice freezing satellite by our May, who I didn't realize we have. That's awesome. That's not true. There are a couple good ice walls there. Oh, but I do love Junkrat. Tightly packed streets and Junkrat. Super cool. Take that. Oh, their Junkrat got me as Junkrat. That's funny. That guy got a five player kill streak. Well, then. Huh, as much as I to aim up. I am. That's true. I am bouncing grenades. I'm like the demo man from TF2, not the soldier. I, I'm less effective. I have to look up. That's a great point. Man. A little tutorial help text ended up being a much bigger influence than I ever would have thought. Much more helpful. Whoa, that object's not so... Well, if I'm the only person he killed with that ult, that's fine. I think he did that on purpose. I think he just... That I did not realize. Mm. Not as much damage as I wanted to do, but I'll take it. Handling it. There was the junker that killed me before, but that's not an issue. Okay, good. That's my healer. Got him. Did we get each other? Or did... Oh, Doomfist got me with his little t shirt No. We killed each other! Junkrat on Junkrat violence. Nobody wins. <laughs> Interesting. We're holding him back. That's a cool the headless horseman's a good skin for Reaper. That's dope. Oh bye Tomaki. Sorry about that man. Deep in the game, hello and goodbye. Deep in the game didn't realize you'd stop by. Sorry about that man. Oh You know what? That was such a good idea. Other junk red. I think I'm gonna do the same thing. That's from far back too. Yes! Did not think we'd have that one. We got it. Mm. Play of the game. Yeah. Moira's getting a lot of play. That's cool. 
that's way cool. I like Moira more and more. I think I've seen this character for a couple of minutes now, and I'm enjoying it more and more. Huh. Destroyer. Epic pure class. <laughs> All righty righty. Pet me? What's my mammoth defense? No, I want to play as Moira. Mmm. First ever battery change on camera. First ever time equipment going down because there's a battery change and everything's fine. Science will reveal the truth. The truth. <laughs> 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 39 seconds. Now I play the waiting game. Hello. Attackers incoming in 30 oh, that was her. Oh, that's why. Can I even reload this? Biotic energy. Where do I even see that? I like the sound design. Nice little, like, evil, ominous, high fantasy wizardry tone that you hear. Oh, there's the biotic energy thing. Oh, and doing damage doesn't harm anything. Okay. It doesn't take up any biotic energy. It's very interesting. Hello, Pidgey. You are a Pokemon. I need to be with my team. Cool. So far, I don't even need to do that. Everything I was saying about Moira being a good character who's slowing enemies. Am I being attacked by Moira? This will improve your condition. Everything I was saying about Moira doing attacks that slow people down and having that really big drop in visibility being so effective, I realize now that that's her ult. Oh, cool. I see. You get to buff yourself that way. That's awesome. So the bouncy ball. So like that. That bouncy ball. You get to buff yourself and those around you or or deal damage to your opponent with that bouncy ball on top of what you get to do while you shoot. So the mechanic of throw a grenade while you run in shooting applies to this healer. That's cool. I wonder if that's been seen before in another popular game. Because I was, I was, you know, rhapsodizing oh, about um, Anya in this game and how... I really love the you shoot to heal mechanic. And then uh, my friend Matt Hall, um, one of our co-producers here at uh, Min Potion, who just left, was saying that was actually from the original Team Fortress. So I wonder if that was a thing from from previous games, much like I thought. Um, oops. Much like I thought um, Anna's mechanic was original. Oh yeah! Wow. Oh, yeah. moment when you realize you're pressing the right button it's just not doing you any good oh it was the other moira spread out and use coalescence ah. Ooh. 
Coalesce. Is that my ult? Yeah, that heals allies and damages enemy. Okay. Can I shoot? That's more of a jump. Perhaps a new methodology is required. I am the healer. I need to stick with my team. Ah! Oh. Using your ult. Farah using her ult. Yeah, that did not take long. Okay. That was well played by them. Ooh, look at this skin for McCree. Play of the game. Butters. Yep, I think I'm in this play of the game, getting killed. And... Ha, there I am! Is that a six player kill streak? Only four player. Okay. Okay. Mm play the game. I missed it. Um, who is that? There. Farah. Traveling to Horizon Luna. Prepare to attack. Select your hero. Attack. I want to keep trying be getting better with Tracer. Yeah. Mm -mm. Two double double kills. Cool. In quick succession, she got two double kills. Two heals. Oh, no comments. Cool. So our two healers tank mixture. I my, my my hand wasn't on the keyboard. That was one key to the right, so I didn't just hit my e ability just now. What are you talking about? I just travel through time for no reason like that. What are you talking about? I didn't just do that. Ah, oh, I'm tired of waiting. I'm just gonna look through my big. Wow, I think I understand what Winston felt like now. Looking back at the Earth from here. I had no idea I could do this. I had no idea I could do this. I was being... <laughs> Pitchy used Gust. That's funny. Uh, we have someone... I had no idea that I could look through the telescope. I was being silly as I'm hosting. Just like, I'm bored waiting for the game to load. I'm just going to read my... Oh, they have a Zumba. How cute. Uh, I'm going to look through the big telescope. And you can. I walked up and press R and I can look down and see Watchpoint Gibraltar. How does he land on his feet like a cat? That's cute. Yeah, lots of... Fun cartoony stuff in this game. Ready. So many Roombas. Is this the same Doomfist I've been playing against? Oh, <laughs> possibly. Okay. <laughs> Use pulse bombs. That's my ult. Use pulse bombs to destroy static defenses. Well, obviously, but I have to wait for that to charge, which is faster for... An ult charges faster for Tracer than most, but still. All right. There's that guy done in quick succession. Okay, did not expect a close range headshot like that. Probably should have. The sniping just doesn't happen that much in this game. Oh, she's got like an, a uh, dragon off. Well done. Yeah, not the only sniper character in this game, but not sniping's just not a big part of this game. Hanzo, the man with the bow and arrow, qualifies as a sniper in this game. You'll get that comment when you're loading up, uh, when you're picking your heroes. Um, and you have too many snipers, you know, if just you have a Hanzo in there, he counts as a sniper. Which at first makes a lot of sense, but you realize that, you know, looking down, one-shotting people with a scope, which is what people most commonly associate with sniping, at least uh, in my experience, not happening a lot in this game. Oh! 
jumped out of the way at the last second. I was about to sticky bomb that diva. No, no such luck. That pulse bomb is really powerful, but it's not. It's got such a short range. I just found out, and they tell you, you know, um, when you end up killing yourself, with like, be sure and use, you know, Tracer's uh, jump ability to to avoid that. But it's so short range. I found out just today, as a matter of fact, um, playing with Matt, um, that that's a sticky bomb. So now that I know that, in the future. Ah, oh, got me. Airwalker. I don't know if that propel considering he was killing me in midair. Ooh. I like the skin for that gun, though. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. Super cool. Well, again, Airwalker. Oh. There we go. Wow. Okay. That's a bomb with a big blast radius. Is that Diva self destruct? Take out our Moira as well, it looks like. Yep. And then immediately get your mech back. All right. Well done. Well done. <laughs> what about blue? Alright, last time I got my ult while dying, I had to go back 25%. Um, I had to go back 25% charge, so it dropped me down to 75. I don't know why that happened, or even if I just wasn't paying attention to something. But I have my ult now. That's cool. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Airwalker, good. Thank you, Mercy. I am back. I'm not going to waste that. Oh, as I I say, as I die. Soldier 76. I think there's something about your complete evil can evil costume. You know, just, just being a guy in a cute little outfit, replete with cape, and you put stars and racing stripes on your nerf looking nerf weapon there. It makes me not take it that seriously, but it cost my life there. There we go. There we go. Oh, all right. That's your ult. Okay, so deal that weapon dealing that ult, my result dealing damage, does not slow you down. It just took me for a shock the first time I saw it, and I just couldn't see anything, and I kind of panicked there. Oh, I was the only kill that time, or er, so my kill cam shows. Okay, so. My result, not as powerful as I thought at first, because it was shocking to me because it's brand new, uh, but still really effective, because um, that beam that she shoots is just so big, you have trouble seeing. That's valuable. That's a cool, that's a good tactile, you know, people talk about, or should be talking about, uh, how games feel, you know, does the game feel good, does it look good, you know, um, and it, that, that's a good palpable effect of that attack, which is just, oh wait, what's going on? And all it does is just get in your way with all those big bright colors. See all those big Laker colors? Yeah, like, that'll, that'll slow you down and just make you, uh, what? Because it fills the screen if she points it right at you. And all of Moira's attacks are directional. They're, they're beams. you got to point right at them. And as with any... Oh, is Torbjorn's... 
turret that got me. All right, it's always frustrating. It's not a person that, well, the person placed it, so it's technically that person. Sorry, I'm just being annoyed and complaining. A nerd on the internet complaining, can you believe it? Um, so yeah, um, all of all of Morris' attacks are directional, even that bouncing ball, and I love that. Mercy brought me back again, thank you, Mercy. Oh man, I can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Soldier 76 as Mercy. There's some characters you can. I was going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, like just mano a mano. We were both shooting each other in the face with um, Sombra, or not Sombra, uh, Widowmaker. And and obviously the other with the other Tracer, both I was doing just fine. But against Soldier 76, it just doesn't work. Ugh. Ugh. Totally did that on accident. That's the third time our Mercy revived me. Thank you so much, whoever that is. Well then. Okay, that sniper. The, re the reason I went off on that tangent before about how and why sniping is not a big part of this game, that sniper doing so well. Hey, well done, you. Ugh. That awkward moment when you hit reload instead of jump backwards. I used my aura ability, which is just turn blue. Nice. That was satisfying. Well done. I was being really careful. Gonna use my ult on that turret. Hate those turrets. Two shots. Drop me. Ah. Okay, 30 seconds. I get that juicy target I wanna hit. Torbjorn in this turret. Worth it. Worth it. We're contesting it. This Widowmaker's good at sniping. We got it! Nice. 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 Cool. Oh. That just reminds me of Gene Wilder. That makes me kind of sad. GG. Air. Cool. Cool. I think, folks, I'm going to step, uh, step off a camera for a second. But I'll be back. And there she is, Moira. Actually, we don't know what, her gender, what their gender is. It's simply Moira. Cool. Cool. Good for Blizzard. We were talking about that a little bit before. That that might be a um, transgender character or... Um, you know, androgynous enough to be gender neutral, which I think is very cool. Anyways, I will be right back.
la 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 Interesting. It appears I am not live. Except we are. So we are live after all. <laughs> is that broken glass in my seat? No. No, it is not. Okay, thank you for bearing with me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to it. Oofed. Oofed. Most exciting part. Finding game screen. I was waiting for it. I hope you were too. I mean, of course you were. Good so far. Hashtag bless us. Uh, let's put the motion into mint potion. Yeah, mint potion is pint motion. I've been saying it for years. Apparently we're blessed with uptime. Yeah. Coo coo. Coo coo. I'm a girl. This is thunder. Oh man, I've always wanted to go to Vaskaya Industries. How do they know? I just want to know how they know. That's freaking me out, man. It's freaking me out. And we are... Yeah, I'm tired of going. Tracer's cool, but I'm not good with her. I'm going to get better at Tracer. <laughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Low team damage is what was the case before we got a junk rat and a Farah. Cool. Oh, the nonsense things you say when you play video games. I love it. I love it. Four, three, two, one. Earth below us. Fifteen falling. You ready? This is serious. I wiggle my guns. This is so serious. Mm. Mm. Oh good, we have a turret. Those little turrets ended my life so many times. I'd say they ruined my life, but that implies that my life was still going to be ruined. <laughs> I like this. I'm going to flank around. Plunk, 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 plink, plink, plunk, plunk. Arg! Arg! I turned into a pirate. I got so annoyed. Arg! Lots of pirates have hepatitis. Hepatitis. Arg! Anyways. <laughs> well then. Tried to kill the man, and his turret was behind me the whole time. And it was Soldier 76 who got me after all. Well, <laughs> business like. Just runs up, pop, 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 and leaves. Each shoots and leaves. And my turret was over there. My mouse completely left my table as I was doing that. It was awesome. Wow. I only got like a third. No less than that. Man. I thought that was I thought that was her ult though, so that could have been a lot worse. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here's my ult. At least, at least, because I hit my ult, I hit Q to use my ult there. But if I had deployed it as soon as I had gotten killed, then that would have just dropped it where I was standing, where it would have heard no one. I'd have been mad. Mm, mm. Cool. Sorry for the quiet for, for, for the dead air there. I, that was intense. <laughs> oh, we have Roadhog. Very nice. Nice. There we go. Ooh, I like that. I just hit... I just hit... Um, the E ability, which for, for Tracer, of course, is time travel, along with reload, and I did them simultaneously, and I forgot that I could do that. Oh, of course, I can't do either right now to test it, but still. Alright, get more comfortable with Tracer, which is my goal. Good, good, good. Good, good, good. 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 Oh, no, it's an ult. Okay. Cool. Almost dropped that fairy, even though she was using her ult. Here we go. Yep. Just can't get through that shield. Nothing gets through what's his name's shield except for getting behind him. Reinhard shield. So, that was scary, but it would have been. Would have been effective. And what they say, close only counts with horseshoes, hand grenades, and thermotactical nuclear warfare. Because with a nuke, you just don't have to be that close. You just don't. Interesting. Okay. Oops. Whoops. Don't run into a wall. Mm. No. They did well, whoa. They did all the time. I like that Viking skin. Oh, that's nice. Sure, Moira already has skins. Kind of geisha esque. Oh, and of course, her nails coordinate. Geisha esque. Robes. Some sort of geisha esque robe to go to contrast her really cool, um, normal, like, vampire esque, like, interview with the vampire type of uh, costume. Which is cool. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Sounds good. I realized that I was on mute, but I could just point out that uh, off frame we have yet another friend stopping by. Uh, Chris Anderson, you know, from Getting Wrecked with Chris Anderson. Matt Hull was earlier, was here a little bit earlier. Um, I want to. Yeah. Yeah, I want to. I want to try some more. I've been giving commentary. This character launched today, Chris, um, and I've been giving commentary on her all since. Ever since I just logged in to keep uh, stress testing our new equipment. Um, yeah, I was just like, oh, cool. I, more to talk about. Um, so yeah, 
This is Moira. Moira. Scary thing for a video person like myself to hear, because Moira, spelled differently, spelled with an E instead of an A, um, refers to a very specific type of video distortion where parallel lines that are really close together begin to band and blur, and they it actually, you could, you could make an animation out of it. Um, it it's so dynamic um, when viewed through a camera. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, our producer is nowhere to be found right now. Um, he'll no doubt be back though. So he does. So we don't have anyone to grab him a mic just now, um, unless you know where they are and you'd feel like grabbing yourself a mic, Chris. Um, but uh, what Chris is saying is that that uh, effect Moira is something that you can see in the real world, which is definitely true. Um, it's much more pronounced when you're watching it on a screen, just because um, cameras capture images differently than the human eye works. Um, they're comparable, but they're not the same. Um, but yeah, you can you can see Moira um, with the naked eye. Um, a friend of mine had a t-shirt. I, I needed to explain this to someone that I was filming. Um, uh, I was explaining Moira to my interviewee, um, and a friend of mine was wearing a shirt that was so had such tiny lines on it, was checkered such that um, you could see it, Moira just with the naked eye as he was standing right there. Ah, oh. more dead air mm, because I had more intense moments. Wow. Huh. Someone named themselves Aryan. Just spelled it slightly differently. There was a floor. How edgy. And they say Moira is the edgy one in this game. Huh. Right. Not, <laughs> gotta remember, not playing as, uh, not playing as Mercy or, um, a Tracer right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's super annoying. Train was gone. I'm so sad. Cool. I thought for sure I'd have ghosted through that Soldier 76, but I totally just bumped right into him. That's good to know. Ah. Interesting. That's not a ghost effect or a warp effect. It's just a jump effect. So when you're when you're doing that that phase in and out ability that Moira has, you just walk right into the next solid object in front of you, which totally includes other characters. That's not good. Come on, Torpion. Come on. There it was. Okay. So we lost objective A, but we're going to get objective B. Oh, that's awesome to know. Okay, that's super cool. That was an important thing to test, is that Moira's um, bouncing ball of death will go through an enemy Reinhardt shield. That's cool. Take that. Okay. Got us both. Man. Knocked two thirds of his health down. Okay. I like Moira. I hit him with just this one thing. That blew me. And my friend and my turret up. Oops. Yeah. This is not in the cards for us. <laughs> was it what just happened? It was. Oh, great. I was play of the game. Yep. Well, then.
Arriving at watch point, Gibraltar. Oh, cool. First level I ever played. Uh, yeah. Let's check out Symmetra. The true enemy of humanity is disorder. Free beam weapon with increasing damage. And there's fire orb. It applies to all the levels. There's a spawn room. Deploy a generator that provides additional shields. Cool. Additional shields. Cool. Sentry turret. Good. Moves forward. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Matt was not kidding. Zenyatta is crazy powerful. <laughs> Someone named Weeaboo is playing as Genji. Interesting. Huh. I just got one of those. Oh, hello, Easy Ypsilon. Sorry, I didn't see you there. It'd been a while since someone had come around. Um, what's up? I wish I could play this. My PC just isn't strong enough. I know. Being strong enough is a hard thing to find. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, no, we have a healer. What are you talking about? Sorry. Um, yeah, finding a strong enough PC is tricky um, for a game like this. Do Trisha's guns make the insides of the magazine go back in time? I love that analysis. I love that idea. Just like, how does that thing reload? Just there's the, uh, okay, I see I see flashing lights and sp uh, they're spinning. I like it. I, I choose to believe what you just said because it's so cool. That's a great idea. Good observation. Um, yeah, I'm sure the magazines just go back in time. They just load at once. Constantly loads itself. That's great because when she, oh yeah, that's so cool. Okay. Thank you, Epsilon. It's either Izzy or Izzel. I'm having a little, it's a little far away for uh, my, my my courtesy monitor is. Yeah, yeah, thank you, man. Um, or thank you, I should say. Um, yeah, yeah. The waiting game, where I shoot the kinds of props I actually model around here. Interesting. Bunch of people, and I'm not that powerful. Let's do this. Thank you. That person's Genji model just said, oh, impressive. I do love doing that. Just immediately hacking someone. Oh, well, I hacked him. Okay, I hacked that Reinhardt so he can't do any of his really important stuff like use his one ranged attack or use his, his shield and stuff like that. Um, but that Bastion was just well hidden. I remember in the beta of this game, there was no limit to how many people could play the same hero. So you'd have teams of four Bastions, and teams four Bastions, four McCrees, and then for fun, one person would be Genji, and you just couldn't beat him. And then you do something like, no, I want to play what no one else is playing. I think that's cool. And it's always cool to do something different and stand out and all that. But man, you just couldn't win. You had to be one of those, you know, less competitive, um, I'm just playing for fun, in order to do something like, you know, play as a different character than everybody else and at all. Ugh. Come on. Oh, I got stuck by the pulse bomb. Tracer used their ult on little old me. Just skirmishing off in this room. Interesting. God, that weapon has a small blast radius. That that pulse bomb. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy. God, I hope that's a friendly bastion. Ah oh boy. Yeah, I thought I finished hacking that Bastion, and I had not. But not even the Bastion killed me. That's funny. You'd think that giant robot blasting its guns in my face would be the death of me, but it's just, it just simply wasn't. Teleporter created. I'll take that. 
probably make my own too. I see you, and now so do all my friends, Mr. Well-Placed Bastion. Rap battle, anyone? Come on. I'll go easy, says Levy. Not in, not in our Twitch chat here, but in... Ooh, but in, uh, in-game. What's up, Slon? Say, I can imagine it being a problem reloading your mags by going back in time. Uh, Vern just picked it with a, Oh, referring to it uh, being in the, uh, the beta when anybody could be anybody. Any, uh, any player could be the same hero any number of times. Um, if just picked Widowmaker and had a sniping match. That would be the most epic sniping that happens in this game. I was saying that a little earlier on in the stream, which is um, that just sniping is just not a big part of this game. You know, it's designed not to be. Um, so that would be very interesting. Um, you know, I remember Widowmaker being less effective um, than she already was. Oh, they took care of that guy already. Interesting. Um, oh, that did not last long. Huh. Um, yeah, it just had a sniping match. Um, stuff like that tends to balance itself out when everybody's got a weapon that's got dual modes, like Widowmaker's assault rifle, sniper rifle. As soon as everyone starts sniping, someone will just flick it over to full auto and run around and get in everyone's face. Uh, wouldn't be a problem for a few matches, but we'd probably do that all the time. Yeah, no, games like, um, Chivalry, um, uh, prove that really well, which is just you have all these classes and all these, you know, all this cool stuff you can do, and then whoever's just got the longest range weapon, one who wins. On. There goes Diva on foot, doing more damage. I found out um, another thing I learned about Overwatch is by playing it this last hour. Um, Diva on foot, not I mean not in her mech, does more damage per second than which is in her mech, unless because um, those those shotgun looking attacks are exactly that shotgun attacks uh, when Diva's in her mech. So um, you, unless you get right up in her face like in someone's face like that, you do more damage with the little water pistol that's so hard to hit anyone with, um, which I thought was fascinating. 10 seconds, so I lose. It's cool skin. Cool skin. Reapers and watch them attacking. Let's do that. Okay. No. I'm going to drop to my knees and just fire my gun in the air. Cool. He is bird like. That Reaper. That's cool. Alliance horrible. Yep. Yep. Mm. I used your teleporter. I will upvote you. Absolutely. Well then. We will have more than just me to entertain you as Chris Anderson is setting up. Diva is like that in Here's the Storm 2. Why did I leave? Oh, not enough players. Okay. Okay. Um, I did not know that. I don't play Here's the Storm myself. As a matter of fact, I don't think anyone in the studio does. Um... If you'd like us to play that, um, let us know, um, and that could be a possibility, first of all. Um, but yeah, I thought that was really cool. Um, Diva is just so, so that pistol's not complicated, but it's difficult to use because you have to be so precise. Um, yeah, I thought that was super cool. Because that's, that, that's what I was saying, was I kept getting killed by a Diva on foot. And uh, I was just like, you know what, I'm not even mad, that's just so hard to do. Um, and then Matt just pointed out, well, no, she does a lot more damage. And I was in actual disbelief at first. You know, I was saying to myself, just like, well, you know, you, you don't mean like shot for shot. You're like, you, you, you don't mean DPS. And he was just like, no, really. She does uh, more DPS when she's just running around in a little, like, Samus no armor suit than she does when she's actually in her mech. Uh -huh. How you doing, Chris? Aha. Uh -huh. No battery is a uh, hindrance. Indeedy doodle. What else do I want to be fair? No, I want to keep playing that tracer. For skirmish? Yeah. Sniper, 
be right. Oh, there I am. Okay, never mind. I'm not leaving to fix my microphone because my microphone is working just as well as it did when it cut out the last time. So that's interesting. I am channel two, my friend. I mean, yes. I'm sorry? Yes, you should be something other than channel two. There are four boxes right outside the control room. They each have a number on them. You should be one of those channels that isn't number two. Correct. Yeah, they don't always correspond. They should be, but that's just for the sake of us being organized. I'm going to go help out Chris, and I'll be right back, everyone. Okay. Thank you for your patience, everybody. Little technical issue that just got sorted out. Handily. Um, so what am I doing? Am I defending? I guess that means plan is junk rat. So, uh, do me a favor, Chris, and move your, move your, because right now it's being hit by your, um, the air coming out of your nose. Um, yeah, that's perfect. Cool. So he's off frame, and feel free if you'd like to grab a chair and be on frame, Chris, but right now, um, our good friend Chris Anderson, um, is joining us. For those of you who've joined, one of the fav one of my favorite streams here, both to do, um, and just to watch, which is getting wrecked with Chris Anderson, where we, we play games and we, um, we analyze them, you know? Um, it's the, um, MST3K... Uh, you know, Mystery Science Theater 3000 format that we all know and love. Um, this is this is the man himself. This is the namesake, um, Chris Anderson. How are you, Chris? I'm doing pretty well. Thank you, Stephen. Absolutely. So, so tell me about Overwatch. So, Overwatch. So, this is um, this is one of the best feeling games. One of the best feeling shooters I've played uh, in a long time. Um, this is um, this is one of the hyped up, most hyped up games uh, ever played by one of the biggest studios ever. Um, uh, being Blizzard, um, and it just it just feels great for a shooter, you know. Um, it looks very cartoony. That's certainly um, intentional, um, and it's not. It doesn't have that adult cartoon um, kind of flavor that, say, Team Fortress 2 has or anything like that. Um, but yeah, this is this is meant to be um, kind of an in between as far as the genre goes. Um, obviously, it's a first person shooter, um, but it's. Um, what Blizzard refers to as being heroes-based rather than um, class-based. So rather than being a person who runs around with different weapons and those different weapons um, can determine your behavior characteristics, like how fast you can move and things like that. Um, right. You know, that would be an example of, of um, just you're playing as a soldier and you have different classes and things like that. Um, when, when Blizzard says you play as a different hero, you know, that language really comes from um, MOBAs, um, which I've actually never really been into, um, you know, um, so this is a first-person shooter, and it has the typical mode, like you know, team deathmatch or capture the capture king of the hill and stuff like that, capture mm -hmm. the flag. Um, um, but each each um, hero um, plays drastically differently because they'll have different abilities that require things like different resources and things like that. So you know, there are the heavier characters and stuff stuff that sounds like there's still classes. You know, like that like this game is actually not distinct. So like you know, you could be healer or be a tank and stuff like that. But yeah. But it's more generic. Um, yeah, you know, those, those differences are even more, even more generic than in a typical shooter. And all the, the special abilities, um, um, are so drastically different. Or, um, the, um, the different weapons that some characters have will, um, be something that you'd find in, like, in a different genre. Like, some heroes have only, um, um, melee weapons, which makes this a strictly first-person melee game, which drastically changes the way each character, you know, feels than, um, than, like, the character that I'm playing, you know. Um, and it's also very clear once you play this game for a while that they that the the char the categories that they put some heroes in like um, you know attack versus defense is entirely artificial. Like the character I'm playing now is labeled as defense because um, like he's got a couple of you know um, um, special abilities like dropping mines or dropping traps or things like that. Um, but he plays so aggressively that you know I it was very plain to me when I played it that that Blizzard is simply. Um, Giving giving these characters some flavor and some texture 
um, that wouldn't be there unless they unless they simply labeled them a certain way. So he's labeled as a defense character, but he uh, I play him really aggressively, and, and um, so does everyone, because that's what he's actually meant to do. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that kind of like misdirection, where they tell you one thing, but it's clearly the case you're meant to do the opposite. Hmm. Well, we'll make the case for why he should be defense as opposed to attack. Right. Um, he has two... His two special abilities are strictly... He's he's one of the closest... This character I'm playing, Junkrat, is one of the closest um, to a typical shooter character where he's got his primary weapon, which is this grenade launcher thing. Um, which and I love that wheel on the side. Yeah, I love it. Um, it's it's just there too. It's like a, a skeet launcher or a trap and skeet launcher. Um, yeah, I, I think it's hilarious. Um, he's the Mad Maxian, you know, um, down to the fact that his, his character's voice has an Australian accent. Um, all of his weapons are cobbled together. Um, very flavorful. Um, but he's a defense character because he's got... His his abilities really aren't abilities so much as they are um, just special weapons. Like, I just threw down a bear trap, um, and he's got a mine and stuff like that. Right. So, really, just his equipment being static is really the only rationale behind him being a defense character. But you can see that I'm running and gunning even with those static right. abilities. And I will say, though, that I think it's it's just because, you know, in a lot of the games that I've, I've been um, playtesting as opposed to playing for fun, um, I've seen a lot of really cool it, tight integration with, with um, theme as well as with gameplay. So um, I've been really appreciating this lately. But you'll notice that, as I was saying, he's the Mad Max, you know, really thrown together character with not a lot of structure and stuff like that. So give... Oh, that's scary. That's a tank you can do not very much about. Um... Yeah, you'll notice that his character is the, um, you know, the punk rock thrown together post-apocalypse character. Not a lot of structure or not a lot of guidance to be found with this guy. Um, so that's not just part of the character. That's also the way he plays where, you know, you can be told he's a defense character and he's got these static pieces of equipment. But, you know, you can clearly do whatever you want with them. You know, his, it, yeah. He, he seems more like a generalist. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you, you you've seen like a like cross variable like uh, grids, right? Where it's like, oh, there, there's the, these like two poles and these other two poles, mm -hmm. and basically by describing where somebody lands between the, those two poles and the other two poles. So what if defense was a pole, mm -hmm. and attack was another pole, right? If you, and what are the other, like, types of character? Yeah, I think another another poll would definitely be healing. Mm -hmm. Um, and um, it's it's definitely not as as prominent a thing, but um, support. And I realize how incredibly vague that is, but like there are some abilities. So bard. That, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that they're definitely worth mentioning, but you can play this game. For fun as well as for effect, without without really uh, delving into that realm. So so drunk rat doesn't sound like a healer or a supporter. Not at all. No, he's very um, he's aggressive. Um, he's definitely standing right next to the attack pillar. So I, I guess the question is, what sort of abilities do attackers have? Right, so they'll they'll have um, in the way of abilities not that much, but really in the place of abilities, um, equipment or weapons. You know, um, a support character will have an ability, like something like they'll they'll trigger something that will affect the entire team at once, no matter where they are. But an attack character will have something. You know, when I say equipment, something like they'll drop a piece of equipment that'll be like a bomb with a different effect than their other bombs and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this being a first-person shooter, a lot of a lot of equipment are things like you know, she a lot of um, support characters' equipment will be things like shields for everybody and stuff like that. Um, but there's one hellaciously cool character, one of my favorite my favorite heroes that has the ability to deny those kinds of abilities. So you know, whatever whatever piece of special equipment or whatever special ability you might have, she totally silently denies you. You know, this game is all about one of the things that comes from from um, it being a MOBA um, is this concept of um, having an ultimate. So very slowly over time, you, there is this bar that's gonna, um, in this case it's a wheel, 
but conceptually the same thing that will fill right. up over time um, and fill up a lot faster and in bigger increments um, if you you know do things like damage or, or um, defense or support um, and you get this really powerful either ability or attack um, you know this passive support ability or this this um, attack um, and then you get to use your ultimate um, some characters have ultimates you know most characters have ultimates that's just a bigger bomb or a bigger um, shot or a bit of invulnerability or something like that um, right. But uh, uh, and that's something that can be denied by this character that I like so much, um, whose name, which is why she, this character is named Sombra, you know, meaning um, sleep, which is just she runs up and then there's no way to tell it's happened to you until it's already over. <laughs> um, you know, you just see something come up on the screen that says hacked, and then you won't have any of your abilities. You know, like you'll be saying, okay, I got my ultimate, pressing Q. What's happening? Why am I dead already? Because um, there's just no way to know it, but you've just been, you know, you just had it taken away from you. Somebody was mentioning, uh, somebody has a, a cloaking ability in this game. Yes. And she was finding it really annoying that if, if even a slither of you could be seen, you couldn't actually cloak. Right. And, like, I'm, I'm wondering if there's a way where, like, you could just let them cloak and use, like, people's perception to actually find the character. Yeah, that's very cool. That connects very well to to the benefit that that character actually has by by cloaking. You know, because um, um, that's a great point, which is just when you play that character and you hit cloak, um, and um, there are a couple variants of that. You know, you know, it's it's not really cloaking because it's not that you become invisible. You know, um, not at all. Um, but once again, that's the kind of misdirection, that kind of you know intentional mislabeling that that I really like uh, in games in general. Um, this is one of them. Um, where, you know, they call it cloak or stealth or whatever. And um, it's not that at all, because you can simply see the character right there, and it doesn't make them invulnerable, so you can just see them and shoot them. But what's really good about this game um, is just how good um, it feels um, to get really, really thick into a big wad of people fighting, you know. So when, yeah. when that happens, when you have that really kinetic action that this game is supposed to supposed to have going on all the time, you know, that's one of those core moments is just, um, everyone's going in the same spot most of the time um, um, because the objectives and all the game modes are, are pretty similar, which is just go to the spot and defend it or go to the spot and capture it. Um, y you know, stuff like really, really hectic action makes that, you know, you're not actually cloaked. Anyone can see you. It makes it um, so convoluted. Everything on screen gets so hectic and hard to follow. You are absolutely meaningfully invisible, you know. Like if yeah. some character walked up um, and then hit cloak, I could clearly see them. In the middle of a firefight, I could never find them. Um, and it's that, you know, it's that initial like disappointment, just like, oh, I'm not cloaked at all. Um, that gets turned around by that, by that moment, which is just like, oh, mm. wait, that's right. When things picked up, everything got better. And it's not a matter of like stat balancing, you know. It's yeah. not a matter of, I'm going to play that hacking character I'm talking about. So this is Sombra. Um, uh, you know, it's everything gets better because of you know the interactivity. It's not it's not that when X happens, you know, attack A gets more powerful and like you know the value of the damage it does goes up or anything like that. It's when a bunch of player controlled characters, when a bunch of people come together, you know, um, the meaningful stuff they do changes. You know, so like that, I'm not really invisible. This is stupid. Becomes oh my god, no one's ever gonna find me. I can walk up and do whatever I want to anybody and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, and um, when I said there are a couple different, you know, like permutations of, um, oh, this is funny. Blizzard's such a big company that there are a lot of like arcade cabinets and a lot of these like lobby areas, and they're yeah. all like other games they've made. So Lost Vikings is an NES game they made. Right. Siege mode is clearly from StarCraft, and they made a fun little like you know, uh, metal slug looking um, effect with that. <laughs> um, and yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the um, you know what seem like invisibility. This is yet another example of like the misdirection that Blizzard does in this game. Um, you know, it's not cloaking or invisibility. It's just like um, uh, invulnerability, you know. Um, and then you'll, there'll, there'll be a cool effect for like one character's invulnerable mode um, where they cannot be hurt. But, you know, the point is not that they can't be seen. It's just they can't be hurt. Or someone will have a jump ability. And then sort of the cherry on top of that really cool jump ability is that you also can't see them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just going to be an extremely short distance like where I'm standing to the edge of that wall there. Um, you know. Um, that they can't get hurt with um, and then um, but you are invisible for a second you know and that's not just some sort of oh what a cool animation that would be it's that that's a very good way of disorienting your opponent you know like that really is the um, um, 
uh, it's just, it does just sort of look kind of cool. Um, but it's mostly just, um, you know, um, something that's very different when you're actually in the thick of the action like I am. Hi. Like, see, I just got killed without realizing. <laughs> um, I cannot wait to find that guy, that person who's playing that character, and show you the hacking ability because he'll lose that, that turret mode. MP, yep, 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 yep. Okay, actually, that's what that is, isn't it? Yeah. Cool. That's what, that's what I thought. Cool, so this is the character that's got a couple of things I was talking about. The, the hacking ability that I mentioned, as well as the um, stealth ability. So, like, this is the quote-unquote stealth ability. It's so, like people can see me, realistically speaking, um, and I am, I can stop myself. Um, but um, see how the action was so thick, no one really noticed me? Right. That's the kind of stuff that I love and about this game. So that... So ah. how would the character appear to a third party? Sure. Uh, to a third party, um, there would be this really clear human figure, which is what you see when you point the camera at that character as a human figure. Um, and they're just like mostly opaque. You know what I mean? You know, okay. like they're semi-transparent at best, but because um, this character is built to be visible, even when they're cloaked, um, you know, she'll have a green, I'm sorry, a purple glow around her, as you can see, that's just a, you know, dominant color in her design um, and stuff like that, you know. Um, uh, but like sometimes when you don't see, like, crap. transparent things. Right. So that's my, ah, that's okay. what hacking would look like if I were close enough. So that's me hacking. When her left hand comes up and you just see the big purple thing that's supposed to be like an, a VR, like a... <laughs> Numpad. Oh, exactly, yeah. So I just hacked that guy. So he was probably sitting there trying to trigger any number of abilities and just not being able to. Um, and um, that really brief flash of information is all that you as the one playing this character gets. So like it's, it's almost invisible to you because it happens so quickly. So there's a really cool skill gap, skill... Um, um, demand there, which is just you need to pay attention to your own character to make sure that that worked. You know, it's mostly yeah. the sound design. Like you can hear that 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 squeaky little like cyberpunk noise. Um, that's really important because it's the usually the only indication you'll get in the middle of a firefight that you're triggering the correct ability or that you haven't been hacked yourself. That's something that I take. That's a mistake I make all the time, which is just that I'm playing this hacker character, therefore I can't be hacked, and that's just not true. Nope. <laughs> yeah. So this uh, is a cyberpunk character. Oh, yeah. I would definitely say so. Hmm. Um, yeah, you do not get a lot of face time with these characters um, outside of the character select. Um, but, yeah, um, this character is... That's, that's another thing I like about this game is that um, they have a lot of different um, sort of classic um, genre inspirations for each character. So this, there are a couple cyberpunk characters. There are a couple of high fantasy characters. Um, you know, stuff like that. There's just a... Um, there's just a guy in a big old suit of armor with a big war hammer. Um, but this being a, you know, futuristic fantasy game, he's got... Oops, that's going to get me killed. You know, he's got a big yep. jet pack in the back um, <laughs> and stuff like that. Okay, so this is what I mean by supportability. So I just got my ultimate charge. Hers charges very slowly. So I just hit it. It's not a big bomb. Now everyone in my team can see all the enemies. So, like, you're going to see a bunch of red outlines. I just did that. I just made everything visible for my entire team. Which is super useful. Absolutely. You know, can you like, shoot through walls? I cannot. I can shoot through this guy's shield because he's on my team. Right. Um, otherwise, almost nothing can go through this character's shield. Ah. Bring it. Could you shoot somebody behind him through the shield from the front? No. Um, yeah. Um, I cannot. You cannot hurt. Uh, heroes on your team, but there's but they are solid objects. Well, no. If some if an enemy was behind him uh -huh. and you were in front of him, right? Could you shoot the enemy through his shield? No. Oh, through the shield? Yes. When you said through him, I thought you meant like through his character, like I'm doing right now, or through his no. character body. But no, I can I can yeah, like I can shoot so through the shield. So forward like and backwards, because you're his teammate, uh -huh. you can shoot through it. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna try and demo that now. But he dropped the shield. There we go. Oh. Right. Kill Cam. Yeah. Yeah, that's our steampunk dwarf character. You know, he's the he's the classic engineer um, archetype where he, he builds turrets and then uh, runs around and whacks them with a hammer and in doing so repairs them. Banana. <laughs> 
Banana Anna. Oh, that's a good, that's a uh, Dimitri Martin reference, if you're familiar with that comedian. That's the guy with the, uh, the, the, uh, stand with the sheets of paper, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He has a bit about not being able to spell banana. He says, I, I always get, I, I pay very close attention to this because I'm tired of getting it wrong. I spell it banana. Okay, keep going. Banana Anna. Damn it, went too far. <laughs> I should have upvoted him just for that. But yeah, this is at its core, you know, we've been talking a lot about the the things that distinguish it. You know, I said, you know, it's it's you know, overlapped with this other genre, you know, it's a it's first person shooter, but it's kinda like a MOBA. At its core it's a first person shooter. So really the appeal of this game is just that it feels great. You know, like you have things like the ultimate and all that stuff, but it just feels good. Well, like they're they're building on the things that they've they've done before, so they they really know about like skills and stuff like that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when when they sort of combined the uh, the abilities that you had in like Diablo mm. with Warcraft and Warcraft Three, right? Right, right. Which MOBAs came from a mod of Warcraft Three, right? Yes, I always forget that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's absolutely true. I'm simply, you know, I'm, I'm like anyone else. I know the most about the stuff that I like, and I've never been a big fan of MOBAs, but that's exactly right. Um, yeah, MOBAs were born as a mod, which I think is romantic as hell when it comes to game development. Well, then Team Fortress was also a mod of... I, I, I want to see Half-Life, but I think it was actually Unreal originally. Um, I believe it was not Unreal. Um, no, uh, that was, that was, um, I think you're thinking of, um, Quake. Quake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think you're right, Quake, yeah. Yeah, I don't think Team Fortress is actually a mod. I think t it was definitely built with the Source game engine, but I believe that that was an official Valve project off the bat. But I, I that's a great question. Um, I can't wait. Well, to look that up. That's going to bother me. Hmm. I don't know. I, I would have to dig into the history on that one. Yeah. One thing I forgot to mention is that um, Valve is being pretty heavy-handed to curb some some you know really predominant trends um, within this uh, genre, um, and sniping is just almost not a thing in the traditional sense of you have this great selection of you know sniper rifles that can kill people in one hit and they've got great big scopes on them. Yeah. Um, and they the only variations are you know how what's the range of the weapon and the scope and stuff like that. Um, there's only two there are only two characters that can do that um, that have a weapon like that and you can't change weapons in this game. Um, you have what you have. Um, your character is your character. Exactly. Um, and one of those two characters is actually a healer, um, which I thought was an interesting um, an interesting direction to take, where you heal your you heal the people on your team as well as damaging the enemy team by shooting them. Um, and I, uh, Matt Hull was here earlier, um, and he was saying that um, they got that from Team Fortress 1, which I did not realize. This sort of reminds me of, uh, what was it, Sword of Swords or something like that? A classic fantasy story where one of the, the swords could, uh, could heal somebody who was injured. Mm-hmm. And so, obviously, when when we were kids, we we imagined like, oh, I'm going to damage you with the sword. Well, now I'm going to heal you with the sword. Yeah. My bad. Did not do and that. and just being a complete jerk and yeah. doing it over and over and over <laughs> and over again. It's funny. Yeah. No, infinite feedback loops can be very fun. Oh, that's someone's ult. It was just a good bit of practicality and stuff, like that character that's shooting those beams out of her hands. Or out of their hands mm -hmm. is um, uh, like it's it's really effective because you know it, it does the damage and it also can heal depending on depending on what what that player does. Um, but the really cool thing oh, I just got hacked. Um, it's just that it blinds you. You know, it just fills the screen. You know, that's part of what I mean when I say it feels good. It's that you have a lot of tactility in this game. You know, there's a lot of stuff where it just you know you're trying to just run around and click shoot, and s there's plenty of stuff that slows you down and stops you. You know. Um, rather than just being who's got the bigger gun and the better response time, you know. Me clicking like that doesn't help at all. I'm just you can't kill my junk rat. We must 
Defend our objective against their attack. I don't know. The, this world looks realer than real. Yeah, no, it's absolutely cartoony. Um, and you know, there's this is this is definitely a shooter where the point is, you know, killing other people. But this is a game with no blood. This is a game with almost no death animations. They just sort of fall over. Um, no, this is meant to be um, quite cartoony. You know, you can think of it as a first-person version of other uh, Blizzard games. I'm sorry, it, it it is a first-person version of you know um, um, other Blizzard games with the same aesthetic. Um, which is one reason why, like, when this game first came out, my friend was, refer was referring to it as a first-person MOBA, you know? Right. And there, there's clearly paths that you take through these maps, and, like, that's, yeah. that's something that has been considered a lot. Oh, yeah. No, there's not a lot of reward to exploring in this game, which is one of my favorite things to do in any game, you know? Um, as um, um, someone who's who's sorry, I'm trying to aim, I'm trying to aim will cast at the same time. Um, yeah, as someone who's um, um, just getting started doing level design for the first time, um, um, and and here at Min Potion, um, you know that was that was always um, the reason why I wanted to be a level designer was was that um, I love just exploring. Um, you know, the scene and seeing why it is the designers did things the way they did and put things where they were. But with a game like this, it's just a big, you know, series of corridors for you to, you know, get stuck in the action of. You know, there's not, it's not that there isn't a lot of thought that goes into these levels, it's just there's not a lot of reward, you know, to running around. You know, um, it's not bad, not great either. Um, but yeah. I think it serves a, a, a different purpose. Yeah, um, but there's nothing, like, that's definitely, yeah, it's it's clear what purpose it serves, but it's not rewarding, you know, to just walk around the level. And this game succeeds at re just really small things like that, which is just, you know, when I walk around and do s any little thing, most of the time it's extremely rewarding, you know. Um, but th for this game, like, there's this whole skirmish mode where p people, you know, can run around and shoot each other while they're waiting for a... Uh, Again, launch. Most people just sort of screw around, um, and I would normally take the time to just just walk around and explore. Um, and there's just not that much to it, um, which is disappointing at least to me. Now I remember a, a big thing about Team Fortress 2 was basically mirrored levels, mm. and the, these feel like organic in a way, you know. Yeah. They're definitely not mirrored, you know, they do have a clear, um, you know, you can tell what part of the world you're in at any point by looking around, you know. Um, and a lot of that is because of one of the most popular game types is, um, you know, move the cart, you know, like right out of um, Team Fortress and Team Fortress 2. You know, um, mm -hmm. you have to hold a point and if you lose it, then there's, you know, a vehicle that's got a bomb strapped to it and it moves. Um, the more friendly players are around it, or it stops or slows down, the more enemy players are around it. Um, organic is an interesting word to use because it definitely, like, navigating it feels really understandable. Like, it's very into... You're not going to get lost in any of these levels. Um, but organic's an interesting word because um, I sometimes find... Whoa. There's a turret, not grass. Okay. Um, I sometimes, um, like when a new level comes out, I'll find myself reaching um, the end of it, um, and I'll think that it's much bigger than it really is, you know. Um, and that's that's an interesting, it's an interesting thing for me to experience because I can never tell if I'm just overthinking, navigating the place because I'm worried about what I'm doing in the game, or if um, I'm sort of overestimating how complex the level is going to be, you know. Yeah. Whoa. I don't know, like, I, I, I look over, I look at these levels, and, like, the configuration of buildings feels like how you would see them in an actual place. Mm. Like, you're, you're not going to have a rigid pattern to, to the organization of buildings, right. usually. Like, especially in a place that's intended for, like, a lot of people to like move about and go mm -hmm. into it's like yeah sure you go to the suburbs and it's like okay well we're, we're just gonna start like packing down house by house by house right and we're gonna have like four templates for the house mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll mirror them 
Right, right, right. But, like, when you, you actually go to, like, a city center and stuff like that, like, the buildings sort of grow around each other because they're not all built at the same time. Mm hmm and they each have their own design because they're built to a specific purpose. Mm -hmm. That... So th this building is clearly like a dojo, right? Uh-huh. And then you have a, a, a bell tower like across the way, right? Mm -hmm. Or something like it, yeah. A ceremonial bell. Right. That's a good question. You know, uh, by bell tower, do you mean that 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 building, that circular building we're looking at, right now? Not not the pavilion. Right. But I think it's behind it. Yeah, the the red building right there. Gotcha. Yeah, there is no. You know, um, it's it's interesting that you mention that because that those are sort of there. It's it's a you know sniping tower, um, and there's no there's no um, art asset that explains what it's there for. It's pretty transparently there. Just to you know, just to be um, the sniping tower for you. Now that I didn't realize that though until you mentioned it, you know, I would appreciate it if they put something in there that made it clear what it was. You know, um, there's a um, there's some type of object. It's not a bell um, in the original objective, the one that we would lost. Um, but um, I can't find a rationale for why that building is the way that it is. Um, but you're right though. This is clearly a dojo. So really, it's just that one that one building. That perplexes me. And I didn't realize it until you just said it. Um, but now I just want to go and investigate. Oh, no. You, 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 you forgot the goal of the game. Yeah. You're, you're supposed to be shooting at people. Oh, I can do that on the way. Well on my uh, way. To out of my place. way. Yeah. Like, we need to take some ground. We need to take a look at this thing. Exactly. Oh, and I just thought this was a bit of fun. But the um, this game has a lot of, um, you know, similar areas. Oh, no, hacked. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you see the big, the big circles with lines through them. That says like no, you do not have these abilities, including the ult, including the ultimate. Um, yeah. Uh, dun dun dun. I won though. I won. That's another thing about this game is that it's really easy to set you know like personal goals for yourself as you're playing, and sometimes yeah. they feel. They um they take me out of how, of of you know how how well we're actually doing. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know like where it is each um each point is um where where each point that you have to either capture or defend um will change so much that sometimes I'll just want to run around harassing the enemy or I'll just want to run around supporting my team and sometimes I'll lose I'll lose track of whether or not we're winning or losing. I don't think that's particular to this game though. Um, that's the kind of thing that happens sort of inevitably as you play shooters, um, yeah. which is just that you know you you get the standard objective and you get a little bored with it, um, and you start making your own making your own goals. Um, and I love that. Um, this game is very good at that, and it has characters designed around that. It appears that you've done better than your career average across four of these six aspects. Yeah, I am not the one who actually has this profile. That's our producer Ben, so I um, never pay much attention to it. But thank you. You're exactly right. I was like, oh, I'm doing better. This character, though, has one of the coolest game mechanics um, I've ever seen. Um, she can just walk around, and then, at the press of a button, I can go back to where I was three seconds ago. I love it. So potentially you could r run past somebody, then turn to follow you, and then pop behind them. Exactly so. But people know that you can do that. So what direction are they going to look? Um, this is um, one of the... I did that totally on accident. I tried to reload, and I accidentally uh, went back in time. Um, that's a good question. Um, this, is, this is the super nimble, super flighty character. So there's no accounting for that, and that's... Uh-oh. Hey. Um, there's no accounting for that. So like when I see a tracer coming, I, I know that she's got that ability. There's no accounting for it. You know, like, and she's she's um, balanced by being super light and flighty and really, really low damage. Um, so, you know, she's there to harass the enemy, and as soon as you get a beat on her, she's somewhere else and stuff like that. So she's basically the roadrunner. Yeah, that's awesome. That's Hollow bones, just zooming all over the place. Arriving at watch 
Mm hmm. Cool. Skirmish. I was like, uh, before you got here, there was someone in our chat um, named um, Ari Epsilon. Um, Izzy Epsilon, sorry about that. Um, who I was talking to. Um, who had said, do you think that, um, asking about the, um, uh, the narrative in the game, do you think that um, uh, Tracer's magazines are loaded once and she just sends them back in time? Because if you look at the animation for going back in time, and then you look at the animation for just reloading, there's a similar type of, like, you know, ethereal effect that you can see and stuff like that i'm gonna say that she magics them in so sounds good to me magic solves a lot of solutions solves a lot of problems so yeah time traveling bullet casings <laughs> that new character's got a mechanic that i'm you know is so simple that i'm embarrassed i haven't thought of it uh, before, which is that um, she's just got a bouncing ball that either d heals or does damage within an area of effect. So you use it, and it's just this big glowing ball that just bounces around. That's Moira? Say again? Oh, that's Moira? Yep, that's Moira. Um, it's It makes something really innocuous, like just that golden ball, like really ominous and intimidating. <laughs> it's just like you see this thing slowly floating around and stuff like that. A, a, a bit like turning a corner and there's a beholder. Exactly, yeah. I just threw a sticky bomb and landed on someone, and we're gone before it goes off. That's infuriating. What is as the Epsilon? Sorry for having not paid so so close attention uh, to chat. Um, my friend Chris showed up. We've been talking about game design. Uh, that's an interesting topic right now, says Epsilon. I wonder, this is before, I wonder if, they've, if they'll ever put Reaper in the heart of the storm. It would be weird because they already have um, Matthias from uh, Diablo. I know I'm pronouncing that name wrong. Um, how big is it? Oh, hey man, how goes it? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Um, Tara Master. I think we've met, but only really briefly during the Smash, one of our Super Smash Bros. tournaments, where I do not get a chance to um, spend as much time with people in chat as I'd like. One reason why I'm here now. Um, so hello. Um, if that wasn't you that I'm remembering, I apologize. Um, and yeah, he is. He is indeed. Um, I am channel three. Indeed. Don't ever let anyone tell you otherwise. Five, four, three, two, one. There are several characters. He's playing Tracer. Cloak, and you can see a bit light distortion when they move Predator stuff. Trace lock. Oh, yeah. So as the Epsilon is talking, is um, was joining us in our conversation, and I totally got... Sorry for not following Epsilon. Um... But yeah, you know, there are a lot of characters in, in Heart of the Storm, which is another Blizzard game where you can kind of sort of see them. Um, they leave this weird, like, after trail. Um, uh, but now Blizzard has decided to make those characters easily visible and just untargetable. Oh, that's a very different mechanic where they're not actually invisible. Um, you, just, you just can't hurt them. You know, this game does something similar well, there, where there are plenty of characters that can um, just become invulnerable for a time. They're, they're less readily visible, but also invulnerable? Yes. Like, them being, you know, slightly invisible is, is not really... I don't know, that was fast. Not really a thing. Um, unless um, things get really, really chaotic. This character, Hanzo, is one of the most interesting. Um, it's just because he, he brings a very slow reloading and very slow firing bow and arrow to a fight, you know. Um, it's a long-range projectile that'll go as far as you can see... Um, potentially, but it will fall over time. So it has to. It takes time to travel, which is um, unlike any other weapon in this game, um, save the stuff that you can drop. But I mean, like when you drop like a mine or something like that, it just lands in front of you and takes less than a second to fall. Right. That slowly goes and then falls on a ballistic arc, just like an arrow would. You know, the arrow is an arrow. Exactly. And I thought that was really bold. Whoa. He also unleashes that dragon spirit. You know, one of my, my favorite things about uh, Young Link in Smash Brothers yeah. was, like, the arc of his arrows. Mm -hmm. And when they switched to Toon Link, I felt like they had basically ruined the Young Link character. Mm. Because just the, the arrows work very differently. Yeah. They have a flatter arc, don't they? Oh, oh man. 
This case is nice. Steven. Chat? Hello. We, we have we, we have you a a, we a, have chat. a a chat thing. We have a chat device. How chatty. Thank you, Chris. Super cool. Now you can look over and and you you can say, "Oh, oh. Who, who 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 was the person that was asking the questions?" Yes, indeed. No, I um yeah, that's something that we were talking about. We we actually have to do some um CSS editing um to actually get the text bigger for our chat box. So it's nice and visible when like when I'm watching the stream, but when I'm I'm actually um hosting it, um it is can, it can be difficult. But yeah, thank you for that. That case is nice. Oh, there we go. There's an example of someone not being invisible, but being invulnerable. I know. I just don't like having to squint at, oh, at text. That was terrible. It didn't take anyone out. Yeah, no, I feel the same way. Glasses, though I wear, I sometimes have to squint to see. Recall. Recall. Which is what they call her travel back in time three seconds. Okay. Don't be don't be at the dragon. Don't be at the dragon. Hey, it was exactly the case that I was asking about earlier. Somebody was behind him and yep. behind the shield. Yep, and no, friendlies can fire through him. Can fire yep. through his shield. I apologize if I didn't make that clear before. Oh no, to. you made it very clear. So, is this like supposed to be Portugal or something? It's like Portugal or Greece. Um, I don't pretend to understand if the uh, that alphabet. Um, mm. on. That that looks like the Greek al alphabet, and considering gotcha. the white and blue. Yeah. So yeah. This is well. this is probably Greece. Mm -hmm. Super future Greece. Super future Greece. In a world where they don't have a very troubled economy. Maybe they do have natural resources in this world for them to fall back on. Who knows? They have culture. They do. Oh my god, they do. Oh, evidently we're in Ilios. I was, you know goofing around just do something like during that whole minute waiting period you have in the lobby i was just trying to be entertaining you know while while that was the only thing on stream and there's this great big telescope in this like moon based level and it's like oh i'm bored waiting i'm gonna go look through my big telescope ha 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 and then i walk up to it it says press r to view and you can look through it and look at one of the levels one of the levels in the um uh one of the other levels in this game sorry i got fence that's pretty cool. Yeah. So now I walk up to every inane little object I can find in this game and press R. <laughs> you were eliminated by l Luckery. Yes. Let's see. Cool. Yeah. Now, now the now the more I look at this level, it's completely obvious that it's yeah. Greece. Oh yeah. I don't know anything about Portugal. So for a second there, I thought I was just some ignorant American, not sure of whether or not a country like Portugal would share some of the aesthetics of Greek culture. The, it looked like coastal buildings. Indeed. Sorry, Hanzo, you just don't have the rate of fire. Also, you hadn't moved hardly at all. I'm sorry? In three seconds, you had hardly moved at all. Exactly, but he's the one who had to reposition. Oh, and yet he killed me again just now. Yeah, he's he's one of the characters that falls into a sniper category. When because when you don't have a balanced team, the the lobby the character select will pop up notes that says low team damage. You know, obvious stuff like you don't have a healer or a tank, but it'll also pop up stuff like low team damage or too many snipers. And Hanzo, that bone arrow wielding character, qualifies as a sniper, um, which I thought was interesting. You know, that's how de-emphasized the you know the traditional um, sniping is in this game. You know. The idea that everyone's going to go. That's another thing that Epsilon was talking about um, earlier, which is, you know, wouldn't it be annoying if... Because I mentioned in the early beta, 
Um, anybody could play. Um, oh, what's going on hero. here? Um, some kind of bad bug. I've actually never seen that. These AAA games, especially from a big studio like Blizzard, normally don't have that problem, but certainly did. Yeah, that was a weird uh, camera issue. Yes, it was. Oh, I think you'd like that mechanic. Um, there's the most generic shooter character they could get, just called Soldier 76 um, in this game. Um, you know, drawing direct attention to the fact that he's just a generic soldier. Yeah. Um, uh, his ultimate ability is just called Tactical Visor, where he uh, just every shot hits. Just Have you ever seen the fifth element where the bullets zoom around to the same spot? Yeah. Uh, that's exactly what happens. Time. So you, you were saying in the uh, in the beta, mm -hmm. there there was something. Yeah, in the beta, um, you could be because you know one of the one of the rationales for having this game being like hero based, as, as Blizzard calls it, is that no one can play the same character. Um, that was that was something that they only implemented after the beta. So you would just see the same instance of the same clearly superior five characters over right. and over and over again. The entire team of eight people would be the same. And it wasn't a two team. Characters. Exactly. Um, but now they really they totally enforce the only one person could be this character at a time. Which is nice. That, like I thought that would just be a really annoying, like stressful part of the game, which is okay, I'm gonna try and get my character immediately. Um, but it's it's surprisingly surprisingly um, you know, relaxed for me. To just, you know, get the character I want when I want it, and then, you know, um, uh, or just take, you know, whatever's left and be cool with it. Um, also, that's that's typically when you find out what kind of game that it, that you're um, there to play. It's just as soon as mm. it comes up, just like, okay, you're at this level, and you're on offense or defense, or it's free-for-all. Um, obviously, you can select a specific game mode, but when you're in quick play, um, as I am now, um, it's just going to be whatever comes up, you know. So if you're the kind of, sorry. Oh, if you're um, like me and, and you sometimes like to um, um, be a specific character, yet again, not enough players, be a specific player in a specific um, match, you know, um, um, it's that nice little race at the begin, you know, beginning. Um, sometimes finding a game within a game is a total accident. Um, yeah. And um, I, I feel like that's very intentional here, which is you, you race to get the tool that you're going to use. Um, I do like Hanzo. I want to get better with Tracer, though. Simply not very good with her. Um, but yeah, Hanzo's fun. With every death. L is the Epsilon. Soldier 76 shows up um, shows up in a lot of promotional materials for the game where you live. Yeah. Every, every, um, whoa. I can do that too. I can do that too. And yeah, that, that icon, this um, aiming reticle, you see how it's got three, three bars? That's if you lightly tap it um, where your arrow is going to fall. They always mm. begin at that top bar. Um, but depend there, there's just this really straightforward, you know, um, long, medium, short um, time that you can click the trigger um, and release it. And that's this reticle will tell you where your arrow is going to end up, which is very cool. Um, but yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, you were saying something and then you very kindly let me finish. Um, what were you going to say? I don't know if I was actually saying something. Gotcha. Um, well, if it comes back to you, feel free to stop me. Um, but yeah, um, Epsilon Soldier 76 shows up in a ton of promotional materials. Every piece of media, every every storytelling attempt of any kind is going to have to have something that the potential audience is going to have to find recognizable. So if this is a shooter, there's going to have to be a generic Space Marine character in it. You know what I mean? Just like, you know... Um, uh, that's why in Halo you you play not totally exclusively, but almost exclusively as the human space marine, or why StarCraft has you know um, the Terran Marines and stuff like that. Um, that's why Star Wars has Luke Skywalker. Yeah, you know it's there. There has to be an element that you find relatable. So you know you're not gonna see like Winston, the um, the intelligent monk. I'm oh, sorry, not uh, monkey gorilla. Um, you know, being used as promotional material. And while you're not going to find, like, you know, uh, Moira, who I'm playing now, you're going to find, like, Soldier 76 and stuff like that. So they're in the game. They're just not, they're just not the common, um, uh, common face of it, stuff like that. Um, but, yeah. It's a potential entry point for people. Totally. Yeah. 
Um, and uh, Epsilon says that he doesn't really like the country that he lives in. Um, where are you from, Epsilon? The government here has such a medieval view towards Omnis. <laughs> a moment to enjoy some peace and quiet. Probably just a moment. Adlerworth. Is that what that said? Where? Uh, th this shop. Alderworth. Alderworth. Oh, is that a reference? hotel? I mean, like Alderwood is a is a thing. Yeah. No, no. I. I um, Not sure. Yeah. Shout them out if you notice anything like that, Chris. That's one of my favorite things to do in games: is see what other references um, to other things that I can find. You know, little things or or full on like literary allusions, which is a debate I end up having with people a lot. But there are f references to the fine arts in the video games that we play. Um, absolutely, positively, there are, and I love debating about it. I, I I know that there's a lot of references to like '80s and '90s mo movies in the games that we make. Nice. You're still at uh, Way Forward, right? Yep. Just for the people who don't know. Super cool. What do you do there? Uh, I lead testing on a bunch of our projects. Super cool. Yeah, sur surprisingly, like, thinking people who deal with art tend to expose themselves to art mm -hmm. and then reference it either consciously or unconsciously. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's entirely possible that, like, Alderworth is a, a reference to something, right? Right, right. Or it sounds like something that they read like a long time ago, and like it's like this thread like in the back of their brain. Uh huh. And so when they, mm -hmm. it's right. Yeah. Oof, definitely. Which is why I think it's ridiculous that people say that you can't have those kinds of references in a game. You know, They're, these are human beings that are making these things. You know, it's going to be the case that sometimes people have an idea in the back of their head. Is this thing do again? I mean, there, there's there's nothing. There's nothing that is not intentionally there. Right. Because you, you kind of have to construct it whole cloth. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, how are we going to make these boards look? Mm -hmm. And so artists will pour over pages and pages of boards right. and be like, what is like an archetypical board? Mm -hmm. Like... So the, the computer I, I use at work was formerly an artist computer. Mm, cool. And so the, the downloads folder just has a, dun, a ton of just material reference. Right. Uh, we were working on a Silent Hill game, and this Ooh. artist was working on it. So basically there, there's something like 50 or 60 pictures of just dead fish and mm -hmm. flesh. And yeah, every once in a while I'll go through that folder, and it's like, man... I'm glad that I am not an artist. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, there, there was somebody talking about like the six months of recovery they had to do after like finishing work on one of the Dead Space games. Oh, I can imagine. Where, like they, they didn't even realize like how miserable during that period they were to be around like their friends and family because mm -hmm. just. The, the stuff that they were interfacing with to make the game put them into like a very dark place. Yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, no, I I, um, I always think to myself I'd love to work on a project like that and then I realize I've never had to make that specific, you know, investment. Um, Years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, and uh, this is uh, this attack by Moira's, which is just a bouncing ball of life or death, and I am not trying to turn a phrase. Like, it'll either um, give your, your allies health or your enemies damage. Um, that will go through shields, including um, Reinhardt's, which is the big knight with the big hammer and the big shield. Right. Oops. 
Um, and that, that, oh, that attack that's blinding me. Remember when I was talking about, like, what, what I like about the, the way this game feels, where, you know, oh, I'm being revived. Sorry, that's that healer's um, ultimate, which is just that um, she can bring you back to life hmm. if you're recently dead. Um, that, that big blinding beam, that does both. That both heals and damages. So it's just a matter of spraying everybody on screen. And of course... It, it, but, but also it makes it really hard to see what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not... There's no crazy stat balancing or, you know, I imagine this game was extensively tested and researched and all that. But I mean, it's just good old-fashioned... We're playing this kinetic shooter and I can't see anything. It's the worst thing that could happen to me. Like, how am I going to aim at anything? Yeah, exactly. Whoa, that's not which, my ball of death. Which is something that's probably much harder to do in, like, those, like, realism, like, things. But uh -huh. then again, the, the thing about realistic shooters is unless you're miles apart slowly working your way through a place, it's, it's not actually representative mm -hmm. of what an actual battle is like, right? Right, right, right. This character is powerful. I never would have thought I could run, just train wreck things like this. I can see this character getting very toned down. getting tough you're 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 getting tough you
which is a really cool there's there's a really cool bit of, of tension there where they intentionally don't because that thing's got a hitbox like that vehicle like it's just got a big old hitbox um, but they intentionally don't define it so the idea of oh my god they're right there but it's okay becomes an issue of hold on maybe not because you can't tell how close they actually have to be obviously if they're mm. touching the thing or if they're standing right. on top of it they're going to move it you know um, but hold on am I close enough um, is definitely um, a concern that they make by not by just doing nothing to tell you where the hitbox is. If I'm using that term correctly. Hitbox. 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 Am I? Well, there, there, there's damage boxes, hitbox. Like, th the, these terms are not precise things. They, they, they exist to describe what you're trying to describe. Gotcha. So, like, a way forward, we talk about, like, damage boxes. Uh-huh. But, like, in fighters, they generally describe those as hit boxes. Gotcha. Cool. Thank you for disambiguating. But then, also, that, that can refer to a place where damage is being dealt to another character, or it can refer to where you're vulnerable to damage. Right, right. Super cool. Once again, Epsilon, I'm sorry for, for not being more responsive. I'm just getting really into everything that Chris and I are talking about. Um, Epsilon says he's from Poland. And he doesn't really, like, doesn't really like the place for reasons that are probably too complicated. Too complicated to understand to talk about. Um, and um, Epsilon says of Alderworth, you end a name with Worth to make it sound British. Yeah, that level is yeah. supposed to be. It's not very well communicated, but that level is supposed to be in Britain. Like it, I've spent I mean, I saw the double-decker. Oh, there you go. Um, yeah, I recall reading an article on Gamma Sutra about a gore artist. I don't remember what it was for. I remember reading an article about a Fallout 3 gore artist because they have the, um, you know, um, gore bags was an actual term in that game. Right. Because just like it's an RPG, everything is searchable. And, you know, they do very, very well to tell you um, what you, um, well, <laughs> um, uh, this man had, had, physically constructed um, like barriers and additional doors outside of his office as a place to post warning signs and have additional physical doors to say, no, really, don't come in here unless you're prepared to see this stuff. I have all my research up to, to make core packs and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I mean, man, just... Cool. Oh, good night, Sophie Mint Potion. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh. There, there, there is indeed a, a cost to to this art. Yes. So what was that menu? Oh, that was chat. This is this is skirmish where people don't really play. Um, I believe that, yeah, you have to do things like pay for communications, which I simply <laughs> don't. So that's why the only thing you see is a steady blade, which is because that's the one thing that you actually get. So my way of saying hello, thank you, and just emote in general is just by saying a steady blade. So there, there's no way to earn these emotes? I think there might be. I honestly don't. It might be something that I'm earning passively and don't realize it. I honestly don't care enough to find out. It's not like Valve's very, or maybe it is like Valve's, um, very fun, um, you know, making the characters dance and high five and talk to each other like that. Um, that I enjoy. Um, but yes, something weird happened to the sound. Yeah, it did. Errol. We're talking. God, we're testing. Yeah, that's ultimately why. I very much appreciate that this has become um, uh, oops, keep on mercy, or tracer. Um, kind of like what we do on um, Getting Wrecked with Chris Anderson. But, you know, the purpose of this of this stream is actually to, to test our equipment. So thank you, Epsilon, for letting us know something weird happened to the sound. I noticed that, um, and I thought it was just my headset where your sound, Chris, was actually cutting in and out. Um, but it mm. came back as soon as, as, soon as it left, um, which is actually why I left a little bit earlier in the stream. Um, that's what we're doing today. Is we're officially we don't have any scheduled streams. We're actually down, um, and we're just we're just testing our new equipment. Um, everything's in good shape though. Um, yeah, um, we're um, gonna be up soon enough, most definitely. Um, are we better? Epsilon says yes. By next stream. 
So what can you tell me about this directional cross logo? Oh, that's that's the um, the path I'm supposed to take um, to get to the um, the point I need to attack. Um, the attackers and the defenders see the same path um, because this is where the vehicle is going to come through. Hmm. Um, I realized that now that I'm really glad you asked that because I just realized that um, they they don't leave it up to the players to remember the path of the vehicle. They just tell you. That's very interesting because it always takes the same path. All right. It's got this great big glowing red thing on it. You got it. You got it. Dude. Whatever it is, I've got it. Nope. Those little turrets will be the death of Okay. That's that's my goal within my overall goal in this mission is destroying those little turrets. Mm -hmm. You've made yourself a goal. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, I talked about um, setting goals within within like overall mission objectives in this game as being something I do sometimes when I get bored. I think that was a little harsh to say um, for this game because there are definite like you know like any good shooter you get real specific. It's um, a good shooter is one that makes it really clear to you what specifically you need to do as well as the overall you know get to the spot and hold it um you know which is just no i need to be the person who takes out all those little turrets because everyone's overlooking them and it's killing us or i need to be the person who takes out that sniper or stuff like that um so yes that's something i do when i get bored sometimes i just want to be the harasser instead of the guy <laughs> who grabs the flag and runs with it um but um you know other you know really clearly important stuff to the whole team um is real clear in this game you know um but yeah no i do love this game as with, oh, no. And I will be the one that does the sweeping up. <laughs> exactly. Why? Because I noticed it, and I care about it. Exactly. Oh, oh, oh that's a big tank. That, oh, it's on my side. Okay. My goodness. You know. Uh, cool. Like, I, I've noticed that there, there's things that people have that are pet peeves right mm -hmm. and oh they look at that as thing. like a thing that is wrong with other people right but recently i've been trying to think about that as n no this is a pet peeve because like this bugs you so you should do something about mm -hmm. it like like you can make things better by actually like caring about it absolutely and Tree is like, oh, this is this is something fundamentally wrong with other people. Mm -hmm. That's sort of a mistaken way of thinking thing. I wholeheartedly agree. So you could have a pet peeve where it's like nobody's noticing these turrets. Right. All my teammates suck. <laughs> or you, you can look at it as like I've noticed that nobody is noticing these, so mm -hmm. I will take care of this. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's one thing, one of the most valuable things I learned in college and, and you know, um, became a big part of my my, um, my day job, you know, um, which is um, being a, a mentor and a, a student teacher and a tutor is um, um, empathy. You know, people do not empathize at the same rates. You know, I couldn't agree more that it's, you know, not an accurate um, way of looking at things to say um, these people aren't noticing it and it's bothering me, therefore people are stupid. No, 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 not at all. It's just that... Um, Oh, my God. There are two characters up there. One right behind. I knew mm. it. I thought I saw that. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, it's not a problem with the other person. It's just people not agreeing about the value of something. Different value systems. Yes. Yep. Man, everybody should have the exact same value system, and <laughs> then everything would fall apart. Yeah. That's, that's such an anarchistic thing to say. It should be this way. That way things would fall apart. <laughs> I was not ready for that. I like that. Well. I I mean, like there 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 has to be actually different value systems because oh, yeah. if everybody cared about the exact same things, one there'd be an overabundance, mm -hmm. and two, yeah, nobody would think about the turrets. Yep. 
you, you can't be all things. You should be the thing that you are. Exactly. I think I'm not going to let you throw balls of death at my teammate anymore. But maybe I will. You seem to have run away. <laughs> well, that was my big sticky bomb of death that did nothing because they all ran away. Man, what a terrifying thing that uh, that mech is. I'm sorry? That that big pink mech is terrifying. Yeah. That's Diva. It's funny, we have the A we have the Grim Reaper and both of his shotguns out here, but I do think the big pink mech is scarier, absolutely. See there we go. That like he's is that whole shtick is him being invulnerable, not invisible. And stuff like that. Right. But in the heat of a firefight, you know, you might mistake him for just like fire effects or something like that like you yeah. might actually just miss them it's like that attention to detail um and like what you might actually like see and hear and how that translates to how the game feels mm -hmm. paradoxically is that i might be is you know virtual feeling um you know that's what makes this game great you know that's something ben was saying you know that was our first game tournament which is overwatch so ben was playing the game to you know to get to bone up on it to run the tournament um, and he's just like, I don't get what the appeal of this game is. Like, it's a good, well-made shooter, but I don't know why it's so crazy popular. Um, and it's really clear to me, which is just like, you know, you know, that's normally something that like game developers or, or professional commenters um, um, exclusively talk about, um, which is just game feel. You know, um, this game just feels good. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's something that anybody could, you know, attest to. But it's something that, that, you know, which is why I mentioned developers and, you know, um, like critics and stuff like that. We tend to be the only ones to say anything about it, which is weird. Which is just, why is this game good? It just feels good. You know? um, so there's this book called uh, The Zen of Motorcycle Repair. Nice. Uh, it was written back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really stuck with me was he was talking about, like, the fact that Everybody can tell quality, mm. like, and and what quality was. Quality is the the byproduct of care, and like anybody can be as observant as an expert. Mm. It's just a matter of slowing down and observing. And like experts have sort of. Well, th this goes back to a previous conversation we had, but mm. they, they, they've internalized and made almost unconscious the process of observing things so that they can get to the business of, like, taking the thing that they're observing apart. Right. And that, that's, that's the real value of expertise. It's not knowing that something's good. It's, it's knowing what to look for to know why it is good. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> I think I will do exactly that. Thank you for offering. Unless you want to keep going, Chris. I'm having way too much fun talking to you. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Because we can certainly continue talking, um, but I'm getting oh, I'm awful hungry. Um, but we can do that over dinner. You know... There, there is a concerning trend um, among some people where basically they, they judge like critics as the, the only people that can decide whether or not something's good. Not at all. And then they're, they're like, well, I mean, you're a plebe. And it's like, well, <laughs> no, plebes have eyes and ears and taste buds, and they, they, they know whether or not they're enjoying an experience. Mm -hmm. And so the okay, there's these games, Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. And every couple of years, I would try Monster Hunter, and I could just not understand what the appeal of it was. Mm. And then the game that they made a little while ago, but also me trying to interact with it, I finally realized it. it's really about slowing down and, like, 
taking this battle one step at a time, carefully planning and executing. And then eventually you can become crazy fast, but that's because you know when to start doing the things that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's very much about observation and execution as opposed to action, 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 which like a lot of games make you kind of acclimated to. Uh -huh. Like if you, if you played Diablo, that game is, is very much all action all the time and almost on the the exact opposite spectrum the 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 opposite pole is monster hunter mm. and apparently like other games like the the demon souls games and, and stuff like that also occupy that that slow meticulous observant kind of gameplay that eventually you build up speed. So we only have 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So let's get some rounds in. Cool. Sounds good to me. Excellent. Now we play the waiting game. The finding game. The finding game. Searching for a game. Now, if we had to find our own game, which is something you still have the option to do in games like Team Fortress 2, um, and I think Team Fortress 1 is still downloadable on Steam and playable, so I imagine it's possible there as well. Um, it's something you can totally do. That would be an interesting task. Ah, man. But how... how I guess the question is, how fast could you do it manually mm -hmm. and... And what would what would be the things that you would look for when doing it manually yourself? Mm. These are things that my brother oh, would I'm, know. I'm mid game, aren't I? Where is? Nope, that's not that's not cool. Why do I? Okay, gotcha. Sorry, I lost the keyboard for a second. You you had, you had entered into typing mode. Oh, there we go. That's you right. Probably the gotcha. T button. No, I hit enter thinking it would be the same thing as left click, and it simply was not. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I was going to say, because I already lost batteries in this keyboard during um, one of our first, <laughs> one of the first rounds of the stream, so I was just like, well, that's not it, so maybe this is the end of this keyboard. But he fights on. Oh, man. That, l that looks like the X33. Which does? The, the, the vehicle that's slowly sliding through the... The profile of it, anyway. What's the X33? Uh, it was an experimental, like, reusable, like, space plane. Cool. Way cool. That sounds like just about the coolest thing I've ever heard. Reusable space plane. Yeah. Um, some people believe that it was the... Oh, what is it? There, uh, there was a thing that would often be mistaken for a UFO called the Aurora, mm -hmm. and they suspect that the X-33 might have been the the craft. Right. Yeah, that's cool. I love UFO history. Oh, man. There, there was a book that was written probably about 10 years ago which suggested that the entire UFO, like, mania of like mm -hmm. the the 40s 50s and 60s mm -hmm. was a counterintelligence thing to cover up our our aviation like our secret aviation history yeah i'm i'm inclined to well i think that's totally totally possibility yeah basically after listening to it, it was like this legitimately makes sense oh my god unlike yes. almost anything else that i've heard about <laughs> ufos yeah yeah, my grandfather was, I'm sure um, plenty of people watching might have heard the phrase, um, like, you know, um, skunk works to refer to, like, doing things sort of, like, in secret or underground, but really well-funded and stuff like that. My uh, grandfather worked for the actual skunk works, which is where a, uh, um, an aerospace uh, company, um, I forget which one, I believe it was just Boeing, um, or it might have been conglomerate of multiple, but he was um, a military engineer. He I was making aircraft um, for um, Might be the Lockheed? I think that's right. Yeah, because uh, there's a Lockheed, like, 
well, plant mm -hmm. basically out of my hometown, and right. basically the the hangar has a skunk on it. <laughs> that sounds exactly right. <laughs> Super cool. But yeah, uh, Southern California has a lot of aviation history. Yes. What was that? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. No, I wasn't sure if we wanted to fill this 10 minutes or not. How do you feel about cutting it, Chris? Yeah. Cool. It's fine. All righty. Well, thank you for joining us, everyone. We're going to power down. Thank you for pointing out our technical difficulties. That's why we had the stream was to test. Um, thank you, Matt Hall and, and Chris Anderson for showing up. I love talking to you. Um, I look forward to doing it again on Getting Wrecked with Chris Anderson. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, good night, everyone. everybody. Oh, I forgot to say goodbye to Epsilon.